Hello friends, how are you? I'm Ray of Sunshine, and today I'm going to be showing you my entire Nintendo Switch game collection. Yay! And I'm going to be reflecting on all of the games that I played in 2023, which is pretty much my whole collection. Now, I didn't play as many new games as I would have liked to on the Switch in 2023, because that was the year that I started this YouTube channel, and pretty much all of my spare time went into that. But a big goal of mine for the new year is to play my Switch more often and try out a lot of new games that I haven't played before. This is gonna be a lot of fun because I think I have a pretty unique taste in games. And some of these games I loved, some of them I didn't, but I'm excited to talk about them. And hopefully you'll find a new game to try by watching this, because personally that's why I love watching these types of videos. That's how you end up discovering new things that you never even knew you'd like. This is my Switch, by the way. In case you're wondering, it is the Nintendo Switch Lite in Coral, and I put my own FNAF Security Breach stickers on the console itself. So the first game I have is of course Animal Crossing New Horizons. Are we surprised? No. Animal Crossing New Horizons is one of my all-time favorite games, and I just restarted my game for the first time last month in mid-December. I hadn't picked it up for a while, and I didn't feel as attached to my old island as I used to, so I'm working on a new one called Raven Grove. It's going to be a spooky, kind of haunted theme. I'm very excited. Comment down below who your favorite villager is. Mine is Drake. He was the first villager that I ever invited to my island, and I've been emotionally attached to him ever since. The next game that I have is something that I just recently added, and it's Disney Speedstorm, which is a Disney-themed racing game, and it's also free on the Switch as well as a bunch of other platforms. I've only played this game a couple of times, but as someone who grew up on racing games, I can see myself really getting into it. I love racing games, and I love Disney. It does have a lot of microtransactions, but they're of course optional, and for a free game, I really don't mind. Next, I have Fall Guys, which I absolutely adore. I haven't played it on the Switch yet, but I play it all of the time on PlayStation. The only reason I haven't played it yet on Switch is because I have to set up an Epic Games account, and I've just been lazy about doing that. I can just play with my PlayStation account on my PS4, and I don't have to set up an account, but on the Switch I do for some reason. But I'm obsessed with Fall Guys, and it'll definitely be fun to play on the Switch. Then we have Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So I'm weird. I love my Switch, but I don't think I'm the biggest fan of Nintendo games. So when Kirby and the Forgotten Land first came out, I was kind of meh, until I think I saw a TikTok of it, <laughs> where someone went around making Kirby wave to everyone, and I thought, this is the cutest freaking thing ever, and I have to have it. And someone on Twitter actually ended up recommending this to me as well. I think they watched my channel, so hi, you know who you are. So I gave it a try, and I really liked it. I didn't 100% the game, but I did complete the story. I'm not someone who enjoys games with combat, and I'm not really into platformers, but this was really fun for me. The combat was relatively easy. I didn't struggle with it a lot until the very end of the game, and it's just so freaking cute. Okay, this next one might be the weirdest game in my collection, but it's one of my absolute favorites. The next one I have is a little game called Golf Hole-in-One, and it's like mini golf, but you have to make a hole-in-one. In case you're new around here, hi, I have ADHD, and I'm always listening to something either on my computer or my TV, but I can't sit still unless I'm doing something with my hands. So I was looking for a simple game that I could sit down with and play without needing to give it my full attention. So I found Golf Hole in One and it's just what it sounds like. You can only progress in the game if you get a hole in one on each level. I think I spent two or three dollars on it and I've completed the entire thing about three times. I just erase my save and replay it. So. I am a big fan of Lego games. I've played a lot of older ones, but for a while I missed a lot of the new releases because I didn't have a console. So I've been catching up on them, and the first one I have here is Lego DC Super Villains. This is one of my favorite Lego games Ever. I got this one on sale for like 50% off on the Nintendo eShop. It was super cheap and I loved it so much that I'm seriously considering getting a physical copy for my little collection. I love that we play as our own character and when I played through, I actually designed my character to be Shigo from Kim Possible and I made her power screen. It was so cool. This one was so much fun. I loved the story, loved the characters. I had such a blast with this one and I really need to replay it again soon. But as much as I loved Lego DC 
supervillains, I can't say the same for this next one, which is Lego The Incredibles. I asked for this game the first year that I got my Switch, and I would say that I enjoyed it, but it just isn't anywhere near one of my favorite Lego games. This was kind of just a recreation of the two movies, and that's totally okay. One of my favorite Lego games was Lego Lord of the Rings, and that was a recreation of the movies, but this was just lacking something. I thought it was a little boring and also very short, so not a favorite of mine. Next up, we have my first ever Story of Seasons game, Pioneers of Olive Town, and I have mixed feelings when it comes to this game. I like that there's romance, but that's about it. The world feels very, very tiny, and the gameplay is super repetitive. And it was kind of hard to get custom outfits, which really annoyed me. I'm currently romancing Ralph, the park ranger, and I think I'm close to marrying him, but one day I just sat this game down and I never picked it back up. So yeah, haven't even finished it. If you're a fan of the Story of Seasons games, then please do let me know if there's a better one out there, because I really do want to get into these games. The next game I got for like 99 cents, it was on sale and I used some of my gold points to purchase it, and that is State of Mind. My bestie Whitney recommended this to me and I haven't finished it yet, but I do really like it. It's set in the future where robots are very much a part of society and the main character wakes up in the hospital after an accident and he tries to find his family. There's no combat and it's very story driven, so it's a pretty chill game and definitely something that I need to get back into. I mentioned earlier that I'm a big fan of racing games, so of course I had to get my favorite of all time, Crash Team Racing. Of course, this is the updated version, Nitro Fueled, which combines both games, CTR and CTR Nitro Kart. It also includes new tracks, and I love this game. It's so much fun and so nostalgic for me. I spent a countless amount of hours playing the two original games, and to see it updated like this with amazing graphics, new tracks, new characters, customization, it's, it's amazing. Next is a game you might not have heard of before, and that is Mask of the Rose. This is a visual novel that takes place in Victorian London, and it's a mystery dating sim adventure game. And it's really weird, <laughs> but in the best way possible. I love it when we get to be the main character, and I do like romance and dating in games. I ended up dating Archie, and I am totally in love with that character, and a lot of people don't seem to like him, and I, I don't understand. He's so cute. I love this game. I think it's super unique. The art style is beautiful, and the game is absolutely insane. Like, I, I never know what's going on, but again, it's in the best way possible. But the downside is, it's hard. So I'm going to be very vague about this because I don't want to spoil anything, but basically the objective is to solve the mystery, which is darn near impossible. I've played this game from the beginning to right before the very end so many times, and every time the game is a little bit different. And to solve the mystery, you have to meet certain characters and ask them specific questions. But sometimes they just straight up won't let me meet the characters that I need to meet in order to solve the mystery. How am I supposed to ask the right questions if you won't let me meet the right people. Because time passes very quickly in this game, and you can only do two things a day. So yeah, mixed feelings. I do love the game, but it is very hard. This next game. Oh boy. I don't know if this is going to be a controversial take or not. Take or not? Take who's not? But I regret buying this one, and that is... Bear and Breakfast. It makes me upset just thinking about it. Bear and Breakfast is about a bear who opens up a bed and breakfast. And I absolutely adored it at first. The characters are so cute. The dialogue is very funny and very clever. But this game was originally made for PC and it shows. This game was a nightmare to play on the Switch Lite. Now, to be fair, I did play this game before I got my glasses, but I could barely see or read anything on the screen. The controls were really clunky and confusing, and then I kept running into glitches while playing this game. The first time I encountered a glitch while playing, I was several hours in, and I got Hank, the bear that we play as, caught in a bush. It took me a while to realize that I could reset Hank to get him out, so that ended up okay, but it did stress me out a lot. But I kept playing and my goal was to unlock cooking, because at the time there was a lot of bear and very little breakfast. But when I finally got cooking, I got onto the second recipe, I think it was mint tea or something like that, and it just wouldn't let me cook. So I couldn't do what I needed to in order to progress. And after that, I just kind of quit. I was done. But yeah, this game just wasn't as fun as I had hoped 
hoped, I definitely regret purchasing it. Now let's talk about my absolute favorite game that I played on my Nintendo Switch in 2023, Jenny LeClue Detective -oo. This game I played right at the beginning of the year, I believe, when I was sick with a sinus infection. I started my year with a sinus infection and I ended my year with a sinus infection. Life is really cool sometimes. And that was one of the worst sicknesses that I've ever had. The best way that I can describe it is that it felt like the watermelon challenge. My head felt like a watermelon and people just kept adding rubber bands to it until it was about to explode. But it only really felt like that when I moved, so I spent a lot of time in bed sleeping, and when I was awake, I needed something to do, so I bought Ginny LeClue. I need to hear more people talk about this game. It's an adventure game. Okay, I need more water. More water. It's an adventure game where we play as a child detective named Jenny. The art style is like the most beautiful storybook come to life. It's fully voice acted now, which I love. Perfect for my fellow dyslexics out there. You solve puzzles, you make choices, the characters are awesome. I could dedicate an entire video to talking about this game. That's how much I enjoy it. But the downside is, it ends on a cliffhanger, which really upset me at the time because we spent the whole entire game trying to solve this mystery, mystery, we snaw, and we don't get any answers. There is a sequel in development though, thank the Lord. If I could encourage you to pick up one game from my collection, this would be it. I highly recommend this game, but just keep that in mind in case you're interested. It's still worth the buy, but just be prepared for that cliffhanger. And that's my Nintendo Switch game collection and everything that I played in 2023. I'd like to give a shout out to Maddie, also known as Permapup. She made a video like this recently and it really inspired me so I will link that down in the description below in case you're still looking for some new games to add to your collection. Be sure to let me know if you've played any of these games before and what your favorite game was that you played in 2023. And if you're new around here please do consider subscribing to join the Sunshine Squad. Here we play all kinds of scary and spooky games so if you're into that why not stick around. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have a very happy and blessed new year and until the next one have a groovy day!